This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I'm gonna go and check uh, the status of our black sapote fruit. And I'm also going to check on our last jackfruit we have of the year, looks like. It's about ready, or getting ready. And maybe talk about compost. Somebody asked about compost, how we make compost. And we make compost. I've been making it here for years. I have to make biodynamic compost. It's one of the rules to be biodynamic. You have to make your own potting soil and you have to make biodynamic compost every year. <clears throat> we got like three inches of rain last night. Everything's nice and lush. Oh, really plain. I hate, I hate that kind of noise. So do the birds. So, I like to talk about stuff that people don't talk about. And uh, one of the things they don't talk about when it comes to compost is location, site location. And we've been making, I've been making compost underneath this huge live oak tree that used to have a lawn underneath of it um, for several years, at least five years, six years probably almost. And I made it every month. Now I make compost every day. We ferment all our own vegetables in like a lactose bacillus. <clears throat> spray and um, I add that as a compost ingredient or yeah I still do because we still do that fermented fruit fermented food scraps we're vegetarian so there's no meat in there every now and then we'd eat fish but we stopped doing that um, so it's just plant material I like to put fruit that I grow here inside there and then put it into our compost. And what people don't talk about with compost is the site location. And you kind of have to pay attention to that, I believe. I think it's really important to pay attention to our disturbance on our soil if we want to grow stuff in it, especially in Florida on sand. It's like paramount that you just don't disturb it. So this is an area that I was one of the last big piles of compost I make because um, I used to do uh, the thermophilic compost where you turn it and that required like walking around and lifting the, the pitchfork because I do it all by hand. I don't use our tractor. We have a tractor. I don't like it. I don't like the sound and I don't like the smell. So we don't use it very rarely. We start it once a week. That's about it. And... Um, so I turned it with a pit, turned it with a pitchfork, and it was about this tall. So it was like five feet tall by like twelve feet long and about ten feet wide. This huge pile here it would be a huge pile of. I use zebu manure, and I use uh, pine shavings for that we use for bedding, and I use the hay that we. It's our, all organic, improved ingredients. Because you got to check and verify where your stuff comes from and what you're putting in it. And that's the only thing we bring onto the farm. It's for bedding for our cows, basically. I lock our little miniature zebu up at night, which is good. The donkeys hang out in their barn adjacent to them. One of our donkeys chases cows, so we can't have them together. And... Um, 
she thinks she's a horse, cutting horse or something. And uh, so we have them adjacent to each other. So the donkeys hang out up there and it's like a mix of donkey manure and zebu manure and pine shavings and uh, hay and then bokashi compost. And then I used to go around and collect under from underneath the huge trees and a uh, handful of soil and put it in a pot. I still do that. Um, but I mostly just throw pile from pile to pile now, you know, and I include old compost. I don't think there's a, any one way fits all method for compost because it's so personal. It's what you have growing in your yard and what you eat. Basically, because we are a closed loop system here. Um, I guess I buy some some milk to make the lactose bacillus spray, some organic milk. Um, and uh, so I guess we bring that onto the farm and we buy some food. So I don't just eat food that we grow here because I eat cheese and stuff. Uh, I don't make tortillas and stuff like that, but... Um, Look at these uh, crinum bulbs, they're so amazing. This is the green crinum that we grow. This is how big those other crinums get that we grow, the variegated one and the, um, the bronze one. They have beautiful seeds. And I would think they're, I used to think they were mushrooms, but... <laughs> Just for a short minute, I went and looked at them and then like, oh my God, these are the, the crinum seats. So I imagine this is just gonna be a solid mass of crinum in here. The oak tree seems to like it. This used to be lawn, so it was really compacted for like 50 years. And now it's like super, super soft, I'm thinking, in fact. <clears throat> even on the trail that I take so I don't take it all the time try not to come in here and disturb things but I've made compost every month and I used to make it every other month and now I've discovered when I move past thermophilic compost that's when I saw that the compost was actually better than the the turned compost, the compost that was made. Here's another pile. See the fermented vegetables, they just take forever to break down. This is like the last pile I made of the big pile. And this was, it used to when I first started making compost in this area, I could make a big pile of compost, the thermophilic compost, and get like several hundred pounds of compost from this huge giant piles, you know, that I was making. But as I've been making compost and then this switched over to the static compost about three years ago, and I used to put the tubes in it, but I just kind of build up some air pockets in there and there's air and everything and it's, uh, it worked. There's the more of the fermented stuff. Mushrooms grow in here. So we've had all kinds of different mushrooms we've eaten through the years. And now it's like mushroom central. And that's a huge mushroom. broken bits of mushrooms. It's super fungally dominated because it's from this oak tree and it's not, none of the soil around it is disturbed. Yeah, the weeds grow in there, but there's not too many weeds that are growing in here. It's mostly just grass and herbs. I have some neem, a neem tree growing in here, right here. So what I've discovered was the best compost ever 
are these little 50 pound plots, the small plots of 50 pounds of a mix, like a third uh, zebu manure and a third pine shavings and then a third like leftover hay that's been peed on and pooped on and sl slobbered on by the cows. Because they really don't eat a lot of the hay at night because zebus sleep at night or cows sleep at night. So they're, they're just chewing their cud in their sleep. But it makes good compost. I mean, it's, uh, it makes nice compost and it makes it very quick in the small piles. The big piles kind of disappear for some reason. It's like the tree wants to move those nutrients as fast as it can. For some reason, I don't know. It's, it's, the big piles don't work for me, not on the sand. Um, I found that the Compost, then mix with some like aged zebu manure, just a little bit. Probably 50 50 would work, I bet. But then I have to th like throw uh, biodynamic preps in this also, so I can't forget to say that. So this will add biodynamic preps. This is pretty much gone. This is a compost pile that pretty much is like gone it's like just that hay is on top and then it's uh dirts and roots or dirt uh sand and roots massed together so you have to so i what i do now is i re, when i make i get a pot of potting soil a few pots because I don't really grow a lot of stuff in pots I like to start some seeds in pots but as our soil is getting more like this compost I don't think I'll have to do that at all in the future in fact I'm probably to that point already but I still like to coddle things along and think I can do a better job than just planting all of my seeds right in the ground tropical fruit tree seeds so this is where I took took the, the the compost out already. This is it. That's what's left. There's like this mineralized, fungally dominant compost. And now we make compost piles every day. <clears throat> Just a day's worth of manure. It seems to be about the right amount. I don't know what's gonna happen when we have like eight cows. Probably do better. But that's probably where we're gonna, I don't know. Six cows maybe I can handle. So that's our compost. Compost, everyone needs to make compost. It's, uh, it's how you learn about soil. So I've been making like these videos every day, basically. I've got like 340 of them out. And I've I'm, like been trying to think of an end time because I need to like, I want to get back into planting during this time because it's like my favorite time to plant. So I had to like figure a time when I was going to stop making videos every day. And I think three, like 362 or so is just like a good number. So I have like 18 more, 17 more videos to make. This mango, this diamond mango that refused to push bloom after it fruited, made three crops for us two years ago. And this past year, it really didn't do a lot of fruit. And, the, and then the creatures got them. And I like the diamond fruit. But now it looks like it's, it's a grafted tree. It's a dwarf grafted tree from Bruce Campbell. Um, 
Those aren't flower buds, are they? No. Couldn't be. Could be. Could be. Uh, here's this jackfruit that's still hanging on. I got some seeds started from those jackfruits. That little tree gave us eight fruit this year. All during the time I wasn't watering. <clears throat> okay, this egg fruit. I, so I picked all the rasapote and the, and the, uh, the canistel fruit, the delightful canistel fruit, uh, which I ate the rasapote last night. It was delicious. I got one seed from it. And I want to plant that seed. And I'm going to plant it in the... There's our... One of our, you know, our water stakes were to know where the uh, turn on for the drip irrigation for some of these grafted trees like the wax apple and stuff. Because I want to see, because I planted a, a, a practice jackfruit in in one of the groups of seeds that I've started all in the same hole. Basically, they were started in the same pot and then I planted the pot into the same, just one as a pot right into the ground. And I've been doing it for a while. And I started doing it slow and then I saw that, boy, that really works good. The trees really, really like it. And... So I've been doing it ever since for like, I don't know, two years, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I have to get this seed in here. Then go check my citrus. Begonias. I love begonias. Rasapote seed, unsterilized. This is these Brugmansias I want to plant around the pool, but you got to do the cuttings of them real thick, otherwise, it could take a while when you're not watering for that to get to this height. But it can, it happens. I've done it here. It takes a few years, but they eventually get big. Just takes longer. Everything takes longer when you don't water. These bananas look like they're getting close. The citrus, the citron, that's a citron. It was a gift from a friend of mine. <clears throat> yeah, I just feel like I don't have enough, uh, I mean, like I've said everything that about, that I understand about soil health. And it helped me understand my, my understanding of soil health while I was making these videos. But I also realized that it's it's impeding my time that I enjoy of um, just observing more and planting stuff. So it's kinda, it takes, it takes up too much of my time. And I feel like I have a year's worth of stuff out there, so. A snapshot into a organic farmer's mind in Florida. 
Because yeah. it's all to grow. It's not to, that's the only purpose, my only purpose. It's to grow, how to grow this stuff and to help Florida. Not just to grow. <clears throat> help Florida and help all the animals and the water. It's like... I don't know. So really, you're really stuck in this weird bubble here of people that just don't seem to understand where those banana trees are looking swell. Mm -hmm. It's coming along. So I need to plant some more bananas, which really takes a lot of time during the cool hours in the morning. So I like to do the videos in the morning because that's when I feel most alert. I forgot to look at these vegetable patches that I planted. This is the last one. This was a good area. Done in the daily manure that I talked about in the compost. All dry farmed. It's a jackfruit tree. It's got kale and some other things growing in here. It's like some cabbage maybe. <clears throat> yep. Black sapotes. This tree didn't really put on a lot of fruit. I notice if you give these things more compost or manures, they produce more fruit. And of course, these are on, these are grafted trees um, that are on drip irrigation for like five to six months out of the year. This particular tree, the lemons, new. No. good they smell good but I have a lemon in the house and I just started 60 trees so not gonna or 34 trees 60 trees <clears throat> probably the other lemon that I have in the house it'll be 60 trees okay where am I going the other black sapote I don't want to go where it's wet because we got lots of rain three inches. There's no standing water though. Sounds soggy on the trail, but it's not, there's no standing water. Which I'm sure is not the case with my neighbors. Always take the same path so I don't walk on my soil. <clears throat> when these mango trees start fruiting, which they do, they're young trees. These are these little ones are young trees. <clears throat> they produce a lot of fruit. I think that little tree produced first year in the ground produced like 18 fruit, orange sherbet. The fruit is delicious. Then it grew a bunch, so we should get we should get more fruit off that. Again, this is an Inga spectabilis that is supposed to have really good ice cream bean fruit. Here's one of the, the frozen mangoes. We had 20 of the young mango trees that were planted in compacted areas that froze back to just above the graft when it, we had 31 degrees of record cold here um, this past winter. And didn't harm anything else. It didn't harm the something more tropical like this Ingus spectabilis. It lost some leaves, but it didn't die back at all. But where the soil was compacted, I should have dug some planted uh, bananas in here. I need to do that. That's seems like it's getting better. Here's one that's come back. This one's come back. There's another one that's come back right there. 
So when this was lawn, this was a old lawn pond and it was hotter than hell. And that's why you get the weeds growing in the compacted hot areas because the nitrogen expands. So the nitrates, the natural nitrates in the soil expand and the, we the nitrogen loving plants like that. <clears throat> you know, the weeds, the shallow rooted weeds at first, like the sedges. Imagine they're nitrogen liking. So nitrogen expands when it's hot and that water was like hot. The lawn, because this was all lawn. There was a giant oak tree there that died right after we got here. Um, fell down because it was all hollow. It was huge. And then this one was dying. You know, because it was all compacted. Here's one of those mangoes that froze back. Oh, yeah, we're on our way to look at black sapote. There's one of those mangoes that froze back. There's a sapodilla in there. There's not too many cars today. I guess it's because of the holiday. There's that mango. Yep, the lawn ponds and the long gone oak tree that I planted dragon fruit on. Less interest in dragon fruit because I want to grow out the kind that I liked the best, which I'm doing, so. taken me a while <clears throat> okay here's a black sapote this tree like the other one didn't have a lot of fruit on it but it has some um, but nothing exciting it has some it'll has enough we're getting close I could tell but didn't really have a lot. Uh, this one just is loaded with fruit. It's just really amazing. Um, loaded with fruit. They're not quite ready yet. I don't see any of that are lifted up. In the past, I would have, uh, I would have picked the fruit when it was like this, probably. But I like to wait until that, that this part lifts completely off this part before I pick them now. That way, they're always perfect. They'll ripen up quick. I don't see any of them that have the top part. It's like so much fruit in here. That's why the tree looks like it's a weeping tree because there's like fruit dangling. Except around this branch. The fruit's very clean. There's no scale or anything going on, or ants. This tree had some of those weird ants that live in like on top of leaves. But I shook them off and they moved on. It's amazing this fruit can sit right in the dirt and ripen up normally. Okay, now I have the seed. There's a few more black sapote through here that have sparse fruit on them. Nothing like this one. Gotta dump manure on them after the fruit comes off. 
figure 50 pounds per tree. I only drag the cart on my foot trails, so if I can't get to get to it on my foot trail, then I don't uh, dump 50 pounds. I might throw a pitchfork over over by something. A manure, you know. This one is that's weird shaped fruit. I think we have two types of black sapote, the one with the B and the one with the R. <clears throat> okay, plant this. So I think I'm gonna plant this. More bananas. Yeah, I need to divide bananas. Take that one off there. Got a little black support or Adamoya growing right there. Black support today. This is a pink flowering Garcinia. Ginger's culinary ginger. It likes that spot. So I have one of those groups of plants planted here. Um, it's got the giant mulch growing in it, it looks like, I thought. Where is that? But I want to put this where there's a little bit more sun because this is like a really heavy shade area underneath these two trees. I get some morning sun, but these, all these bananas are going to block it. It's going to be very shady in here. Uh, only sun would come from that direction would happen. Weird. Wasn't a giant mulch in there that I saw. Where did I see those giant mulches at? Here's one. Plenty of inflata with the cacao. So these are these groups. Looks like I have two giant mulches in there and two cacao. And This is where, this was an old ditch. It's like one of the few. The ditches went to our ponds to hold the water, I guess. But I think on when you're flat, if you have this built up and one level is better than putting in a ditch because that just goes to where the water table is now. So, but it used to be like when there was a rain event and this was lawn, this would be like a 20 foot wide water covered ditch, some up to two feet deep. <clears throat> and now nothing. So here's where I planted that jackfruit with the seed practice with the Adamoyas and the star fruit next to the vegetables so I'm not gonna plant it in there I think I have another space I'm gonna try over here I think the the uh, canistel needs a little bit more, or the rasapote needs a little bit more sun. But I could be wrong.
There's another black zapote, and I don't think this has any fruit on it. So I put one manure there, 50 pounds, and one manure mix there, 50 pounds. Compost, compost pile, 50 pound compost pile. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. Then I plant my vegetables right in it after it's sat there for like 30 days. It works out great. Here's another black zapote. Everyone stores their manures in these huge piles rather than distributing it throughout their yard. I know that's what they do on horse farms. It's like, that just creates a toxic situation. I mean, it really does. Okay, where were those little trees? I know I saw a group of them over here. So it's, it's a, a cha-cha, a jackfruit, seed got jackfruit, a grafted jackfruit, fruiting jackfruit, vegetable garden, heliconia, ginger, weeds, and here's the adamoyas. So I'm going to plant this. This is Adamoya. That could be an Adamoya. It's a super healthy one. And looks like star fruit right there. So I could use one more tree planted in there for sure. I'm going to plant the egg fruit right in there. And that way I'll be able to see if it grows. This ginger, when you plant it, because I plant one, one little thing, one rhizome, and I cut off the top, and then it takes two years to get this size. And then by the summer, after the sec on the second year, it gets big, but it's a two year wait. So I really need to like plant stuff and um, divide stuff while I'm still able to. <laughs> greens. I love how you don't have to even water the vegetable gardens. I mean, it's just truly amazing in Florida. I mean, it really... It really is amazing. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I hope you have a good day.